Uh, well, I don't know, you know, actually, you know what happened earlier on this year, I don't know if you saw this, uh, de Blasio of New York, and some, they were doing some ceremony or something, and they had the hedgehog, and he died. <laughs> and they were, New York Post said, de Blasio kills hedgehog. I mean, <laughs> you didn't hear about that? <laughs> so anyway, okay, um, on that theme, we got a lot of snow again. It's March 7th today, or March 6th, what is it? It's called March Madness. March, it really is March Madness. It's March, what, 5th today? Yes, And uh, so my question is, is this climate change first? The climate has been changing. It will change back. Uh, it'll be hot before we know it. And then you'll say, I wish climate, uh, climate change was happening. Yeah. Be cold. Well, let's not get ahead of the card here. Is this particular preponderance of snow, is this related to climate no, change? No, because if you remember, was it a year ago that it was sub-zero temperatures for a long time? Yeah. And it was 95 when the snow shut down Washington and New Gingrich went crazy. Yeah. So, stuff happens, stuff. but uh, exceptions don't make the rule. Right. This is an exception. Even though these are record-setting snowfalls all over the country. These are meant to be set and broken. Okay. So, Marlon? Absolutely not a global warming. No, no, we're talking climate change. Please get the terms yeah, right. climate change. Would you do me a favor and not look at the phone while I'm interviewing you? It's not. I was looking at the, the weather. The weather. Well, guess what? I can tell you what the weather is. It's, I can give you the weather report. It's snowing outside. <laughs> what do you say? It is not climate change. 100%. Because I have a proof. Oh, there's no proof. All the records set March doesn't mean anything. March 3rd, 1993, we have a blizzard. Right. This is nothing compared to March 3rd, 1993. No, it is, it is because it's setting records of snowfall. I'm talking about... I'm talking about one today. blizzard. Yeah. Today and March 3rd, 1993. No, we're talking about the total snowfall. This is nothing but... No, the amount of accumulation is record setting, Marlon. In D.C.? You know, all over the country. Boston, 50 states of snow on the ground. It's March 4th, 5th. But, but, but in Russia, this is not snow. No. What, does the, what does the weather say about Russia and all this? Well, the CIA has released a report saying your favorite politician, Vladimir Putin, might be responsible for, for changing the weather. What do you think about that, Chris? Seeding the clouds. I think something. he something from NATO and the CIA. Okay. And, you know, is that laughable or laughable? should we take that seriously? Do we have the technology to change the weather, Chris? We have the technology to change the weather. We okay. don't because you get out of control and if you change your weather, you're going to change your, your own weather. Right. So uh, you can't stop it. But, uh... <laughs> Marlon? <laughs> I think that's all he has to say. Because <laughs> his mouth opened and a fly went in, so I, I think... Sorry? The CIA has released a report saying that Putin might be responsible for the weather. For the weather? For the weather. So look, he got nothing to do with the weather. <laughs> he got nothing to do with that. So Marlon, then I have to ask you a question. Why do you hate America? <laughs> I don't hate America. You just defended Putin. You must hate America, right? I don't hate America. <laughs> But you, got, that's, you think that's ridiculous? About CIA and uh, Putin, the weather? I, I don't. Now you're waffling. Now you're waffling. Idea, but, you know, I don't have a proof. You don't have any proof. I think, I think, um, Edward Snowden. Oh, Snowden. Ooh. Ooh. Very good. Snowden. I can't believe I'm the first person to make that link between the weather, think, climate change, and Edward Snowden. I think you are. Because it's one of the dumbest things I've ever <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Marlon, what do you think about that hat? Where'd you get that hat? It's very good. Where'd you get it? I got it from you guys. No, not it. from you guys. All the way from, this is from Chris. Yeah, it's from you Chris. to you. Yeah. Apparently you rejected it. Right. <laughs> so I got, I got the reject, rejected hat. But you benefit. It turns out really, really, really good hat. See, the irony, good. Life, the irony is, is that those that do not necessarily believe in global warming appreciate warm clothing. But the person who's preparing themselves <laughs> for the temperature going down 
He's running around in a bikini. Of course. I know. That's, that's it's right. ironic, isn't it? That's ironic. Next topic, as Tony would say, next topic. We don't want to stay too long. St. Patrick's Day coming up. Chris, yes. is that one of your favorite holidays? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised you said that. Why, why is it not at all? Because you don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day like a white millennial you do in the States, in Ireland. <laughs> and I'd rather go to Ireland and make my peace and okay, St. Patrick. But right. here, it has to do with alcohol and being stupid. <laughs> watching the Final Four. Right. Alcohol and being stupid. Well, Marlon, St. Patrick's Day? Yes, sir. Well, you can it, celebrate. It, it has to be said, I have two Catholics here. Can, I have two Catholics can, here at the table. You can celebrate. Oh. Two Catholics. They can celebrate, but do you, you overdo it. Do you get involved in the celebration? No, sir. <laughs> I'm not Irish. Obviously, I'm not. You're Catholic? He's I not am. Irish. He's I, not Irish either. I do a prayer, you know? Yeah. I'm not drinking. You know? does, does it affect your building, the drunks and everything, and garbage and trash? Of course, sometimes. People over here. Be outside or anything like that? we are outside. Yeah. It's a little, uh, bare, little, little cups. Yeah. On the lobby. Throw it. Hallway. Yeah. Or well, people in the building doing it. Sometimes they throw up in the <laughs> Chris, have you seen any. Uh, <laughs> what I got. I, I as, a, as a business owner, I got to ask you do yeah. people come in and ask to use your bathroom? Thanks. St. Patrick's Good Day. Lord, yeah. Oh, but what are people going to do during Mar oh, Mardi Gras? They, they used to have Sandy John's outside of uh, 4P. Which is gone now. Which is gone. Yeah. And that 4P's... But what that's going to happen... left Chris, what that's going to happen is... They're all going to go to Nanny's, which is not far from your shop. I know, and then Nanny's charges a entrance fee. Right. But I wonder if it'll affect you. Yeah. And people said when a nice restaurant opens up next door to us, it's going to bring us business. Like, people are bringing oil paintings to frame when they're going out to dinner. So, no. No. It's once a year, like global warming. It gets cold, it rains, it snows, and it goes away. Yeah, there's no global warming. We're talking about climate change. You either believe in that or not. It's not really global warming. The climate will change because my temperature will arise when those wasted people start leaving. Your blood pressure goes up a little bit? Yes. Yeah. So, you don't see anything romantic about it whatsoever? No. <laughs> Marlon, you have any sympathy for them? Sure. You have any sympathy for these St. Patrick celebrators? Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, tough crowd here. Tough crowd. Well, you know, let me look at the other side of it. Let me be the devil's advocate. One day a year, people work hard. We're living in kind of tough times. They're looking forward to getting, you know, drunk, stupid, whatever you said. Why can't they do that? Why can't they allow no, them to, I, I, you know, release some pressure? I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. They can celebrate, you know. Yeah. It's their thing. Right. Well, it's celebrate not, by I'm getting... I'm not like I'm against to it. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to ban it. Right. No way, you know. But you said you don't have any feeling for... I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't celebrate. So... No, no, but I mean, do you appreciate that people want to relax one day of the year and do something uh, crazy? Absolutely, yeah. It's, 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 that's why we're human. That's why we're human. That's why we're human. You have to kill a bit sometimes. But don't overdo it. Don't, but and, they will and, overdo it. In a way that you could disturb other people. Uh, right. Uh, uh, well, I have to say, one thing that... other people. People don't know when to say when. I've never been to an establishment where I was witnessing someone saying, I'm not going to serve you. So it's up to the, the purchaser to say, I don't want it anymore. It never really happens. But Chris, I have to say this. In all the years that I've been in the neighborhood, St. Patrick's Day, I've never seen any fights. I mean, I've seen overindulgence, vomiting, urination, but never any fights. Well, right? Okay, fights, you know. But have you ever witnessed any? But I, I think the trash and the rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That lasts a lot longer than a spontaneous fight. Right. So if there was a fight, that would be great because people would chill out and they'd probably not do it again. Right. But you can't stop them from creating trash. And, uh, yeah, but aren't they stimulating the Cleveland Park economy? If the part you want to stimulate is to import more alcohol and yeah. these big trucks that clog up the streets right. and clog up our sewer system that the right. city has not upgraded the infrastructure in 100 years, yes. pipes back up in the buildings, right. I, I think we can do better as a country and as a nation than stimulating that kind of economy. Darwin? Yes, 
there. Well, you know, it stimulates the economy of the neighborhood, right? People buying food and alcohol the whole day. Don't you think that's a good thing? Well, for me, it's not a good thing because it doesn't help me. Well, doesn't everything help everybody if they live in the neighborhood? I think it stimulates to a certain some some uh, store. Well, the bar, the bars, the restaurants. The bars, the restaurants. Yeah. yeah. If we had a holiday, if we had an Irish holiday where you had to come in and get a green frame, that would be good for me. Right. Now, would that be good for other businesses like bars and restaurants? If people came in to get green frames? No. So, is them getting green beer helping me? No. So, just because, uh, don't confuse a lot of jubilation and excitement with everyone is in the same boat, we're all feeling good together. Right. So, no, I don't think it helps the economy. It helps a few places for a while pay the taxes, which go to pay for the new mayor to go to South by Southwest to try to attract more of the same people right. to go to the same bar. Right great money to afford the next mayor to go to South by Southwest. Right. So it's a endless struggle. So it looks like uh, two thumbs down here on St. Patrick's. Two thumbs down. No, no, St. Patrick is cool. Well, the way they celebrate it here. Knuckleheads yeah. who um, think it's a continuation of college. Well, of course it's what it is. Well, that's just it. It's a way of releasing stress, right? I suppose so. Okay. Well, then the uh, next topic would be... Uh, Very excited, aren't we? <clears throat> well, you guys are on the same page, it looks like. It looks like uh, there seems to be a brotherhood of Catholics here. And uh, also, I get the feeling that Marlon, Marlon, once he, got, he accepted that hat from you, is loath to uh, go against any of your positions. Maybe imagine that, but it looks like he's, See, now that's he's accepted that gift and now he feels indebted. Am I reading something? Uh, the narrator, I'm reading too much into it? Yeah, setting the story a little bit too okay. much. I thought that might be your intention, giving him that hat deliberately to influence. I think, I think he's keeping his head warm. Yeah. He's thinking straight. Right. Which is great. It's really warm. It's, it's really, really warm. Yeah, he keeps complimenting the hat. Now the problem might but then he probably doesn't want to like take that. a. I don't have to wear very much. Right. See that? But then he doesn't want to take an adversarial position to anything you say. I see what you did there. Yeah. Interesting. All out of the goodness of my. Well, unless you had an ulterior motive. <laughs> okay. Well. After St. Patrick's no, Day. because all that beer being sold at the bars and restaurants has encouraged the neighborhood to have good spirits. And my good spirit is to give people a hat. Yeah. So we can thank all those drunks for encouraging me to be altruistic. Yeah. All right. So after March Madness comes, I mean, uh, St. Patrick's Day comes March Madness. Does that affect your business at all? Do you get any benefits from that? It gets me outside a little bit because I'm chasing away people from leaning against my window and smoking <laughs> cigarettes and dropping them on the sidewalk right in front of my business. Do you, ever, do you remember an expression, Chris, from years ago? I think it was George Bush Sr. He accused somebody of being a nattering nabob of negativism. <laughs> negativism. <laughs> you ever heard that expression? <laughs> I've heard it thrown around a lot. Yeah. So once again, March Madness also is not a happy experience. March Madness, it's a, it's you're chasing people it's, away. It's a, it's a consumerist tagline for a moment where people want to sell stuff, and then it's over, and then you move on. And um... soon after, you get sick, and then you die. <laughs> what a happy prognosis for a life. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'm not trying to celebrate anyone that's named after a madness. No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now I know. Now I know. Topic. Next topic. We'll go move to another topic. Since you're both Catholics here, what do you guys think of Ash Wednesday? Go ahead, Chris. I went to uh, St. Matthew's Cathedral for the first time, I think, ever. Last week? Had a little ash. See, in the Ukrainian Catholics, we don't do the ash. Wednesday. Oh, you don't do the ash. Yeah. So, and I haven't had ash put on my forehead in years. Okay. Yeah. Decades. It was interesting. Um, so you did it? And there were a lot of young people. So this time you did use the ash? There. Yeah, I had I used the ash, yes. I mean I you had, put you wore the ash? I had some yeah. And you know what they you know what they um, I hope I'm not busting any uh, secret secrets, but I've forgotten that when you go up to get presented and crossed with the ash on your forehead. Oh somebody has to put it on for you, the priest? Yes, yes. And no, they have uh, lay people. Okay. 
But then they kind of whisper to you as you're putting the sign of the cross on your forehead. It says, um, what, did, what did they say? They said something. Sin. They said, uh, don't forget, you, we come from dust and to dust we will return. I like that. Everyone, they say the same thing. You come from dust and you won't go back to dust. So it's, it's to make you realize, hey, death is around the corner. So March Madness, global warming. St. Patrick's Day. Death. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon, any opinions on Ash Wednesday? Well, it's the beginning of the Lent. So ah. So ah. So you, start, Chris forgot that. Okay. That's, that's when you start repenting. Ah. I, I, I repent all the time. Yeah. There's always well, he repents all the time, so there's yeah. no wow, and there's no use for that. Marlon, have you started repenting for your views on climate change? <laughs> have you started? I, I start repenting for my God. So for, I start, uh, started not drinking gold for almost two months now. Oh, the gout, right, right. That's very good. So, yeah. for, for Lent, for Lent, you traditionally you give up something. Yeah. You do without. And Martin, How long do you give it up for? Uh, for Lent, technically. Just for that little you period? You staying all year Oh, long, you give it up for Lent. Up yeah. for Lent. Uh, so so, so what was the last time you gave So what he's given up for Lent is probably believing in climate change. Okay, and what did you give up? Uh, Nothing. <laughs> Whoops. What day is it? So I got to say, based on your answer, I think you're going straight to hell. <laughs> so Marlon, you know a little bit about this history, eh? I'm sorry? You know a little bit about this history of Lent and everything. Well, you know, I'm not really religious, but... Yeah. I learned when I was a little boy. Right. You know, you go to church and you're a little boy. Right. So there's still some sacred things left in life, huh? You agree, Chris? Oh, always. There's always something sacred in life. Life is sacred. Lent's a time for you to stop, realize that you ain't the king of the crop. There's other people around you, there's other things around you, and you have to reflect. 